Hey, what's up, everybody? BDL44 coming at you with another video. All right, so the Golden State Warriors defeat the Grizzlies 110 to 96 in a game where the Golden State Warriors had 70 rebounds, 7 0 rebounds on the night. Kavon Looney had what 21 of them on his self, on his lonesome. I think uh, it was Draymond Green who had 10. I believe I saw Wiggins with 11. Don't quote me on those numbers. You know how I am with numbers. But at the end of the day, you saw this team rebound the ball. I gave Mike Brown the, the ear treatment in, at halftime about some of his decisions, particularly Damian Lee. But I said that him playing um, Kavon Looney was an excellent decision. I was on the fence about it at the start of the game, but it worked out. And early on, it was clear to see that was ultimately what was the difference. Uh, the Golden State Warriors turned the ball over like crazy. And we ain't going to even play about that. They did win the game, but it wasn't because they played excellent. No, 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 no. It was because they rebounded the ball the way that they did. And that the, goal, the Grizzlies just did not take advantage of the mistakes that the, the Golden State Warriors were making. That's what it really came down to. For every horrible turnover the Golden State Warriors made, the Memphis Grizzlies would come down and jack up an ill-advised early shot clock shot. <laughs> That's simply how that went. Um, you definitely want to give credit to the defense on uh the Golden State side of things, obviously, when you consider having so much of a size advantage with Draymond Green and Kevon Looney on the floor at the same time. And I always say these these uh, situations where coaches say we've tried everything, we've tried everything. No, you ain't tried everything uh, because this was something that we hadn't seen before and it worked tonight in this matchup. Um, the, the Grizzlies were just anemic tonight, man. They couldn't hit a, sh a shot outside of the, their stars. Dylan Brooks was really aggressive and, and played well, uh, hitting a bunch of three-point shots. Uh, Desmond Bain picked it up really big in the second half. He played very well. You know, uh, you got to give credit to Steven Adams playing on that bum foot. He came back after that, hurting it, and still gave it his all. But um, it was a, it was an issue where Taylor Jenkins had to live with something. This is the this is the reality of what I saw down there. Tyus Jones was going two for twelve shooting the ball right but the thing about Tyus Jones he also had eight assists and he had if I'm not mistaken he had a bunch of boards too so being that nobody else had more than I think it was three assists on the team nobody was getting others the ball no one was making sure everyone was cohesive he had to rely upon Tyus Jones to stay on the floor and ultimately make that happen but Tyus was killing him because he was contributing to the shooting woes uh, entirely too much so <clears throat> that's 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 really a, a, also a big part of what went wrong down there um i think maybe he should have relied upon slow-mo a little more uh d'anthony melton had it going so I, I felt like you probably should call his number on a night like tonight uh, but <clears throat> ultimately that was just a strange kind of conundrum that coaches just forced to live with it was either that or um you know, try to find that facilitation elsewhere. But really, they just missed John Morant at the end of the day. That's what it came down to. You know, you, you just missed John Morant. Uh, so, yeah, Clay Thompson was fantastic tonight. Uh, despite all the turnovers and everybody on the Golden State Warriors turned the ball over. Just about all of them had multiple turnovers. But um, you got to give credit where credit's due. Clay Thompson came in with a certain level of intent, certain... Uh, embarrassment that you knew that he was going to come in a fiery uh, about his, his himself that you knew was stemmed from that blowout in game five and uh you could just tell you know i was i was saying it and, and you guys can go back and watch my videos if you um didn't see them already where i was saying basically you know the memphis grizzlies were uh, chanting grizzlies in seven at the end of game five after blowing them out and i'm like you know what all you're doing is giving them bulletin board material you, they, they, as if they didn't find themselves humiliated enough just losing that bad now you're giving them something else to even be even more so uh motivated about i just thought the grizzlies were shooting themselves in the foot and sure enough clay thompson came out with that intent and when he's shooting like that with eight threes eight out of 12 threes you ain't gonna beat him that night <clears throat> no you are not and steph curry chipped in with about 30 i believe it was i think he had about 30 points um you know, I just really, really loved how the Golden State Warriors rebounded this entire series. They made it a point to acknowledge that the Grizzlies won their series 
by basically crashing the offensive glass against the Wolves. They knew that. <clears throat> and their way of doing it was, we're going to beat them at what they just beat the other team at. So they crashed the offensive glass like crazy. Won the rebounding edge, I think, probably every night. And except for, obviously, the blowout. And when you consider how they came out tonight, physical, intentional, it was incredible. And then you got to give the Grizzlies credit just the same because they were relentless. They kept coming. They did not stop. They hit haymakers. Uh, there was like 16 or 17 lead changes at one point, it was uh, said, and I'm pretty sure there were some lead changes after that. Uh, this game was close throughout. Uh, the score never really actually told the story. It was more so just situational stuff that was taking place that ultimately defined the game. Uh, I think the Grizzlies were playing reactionary basketball to the ad adjustments that were made uh, to out-rebound them with Kevon Looney and Draymond. They tried to match up by going big themselves, and it took them out of what it is that helped them get this far. Um, and then you have situations where you look at, at Brandon Clark, of, who's had, of whom has had such a fantastic playoffs, and you look at his production tonight, he was a no-show. He gave him, what, two boards? Last time I checked his stats, he didn't even he didn't even do the things that he normally does. So for him to have a disappearing act in a night like tonight, Memphis couldn't overcome that. <clears throat> Jaron Jackson's stats were terrible tonight. He only had a couple boards, just pitiful. He's too big and too physical for them to get out rebounded by 20 plus points and for him to only have four rebounds that's just that that's that's gonna send you home every time simple as that so i just felt the memphis grizzly you know on a game on a on a night where the golden state warriors were embarrassing themselves to no end turning the ball over the grizzlies just quietly allowed them to get away with it that's what i saw every opportunity you would think they would do uh take to, 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 to take advantage of the turnovers, to, to run a good play off of a mistake. You just saw the Grizzlies just, just be humble in the presence of these mistakes. Like, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, Golden State. I, I know you turned the ball over, but we respect you so much. Here, here's the ball back. Let me toss an early shot clock three up real quick. Get that rebound. Hurry, go the other way, man. We respect y'all. Like, that was the energy I got from the, great, the Grizzlies tonight, with the exception of Dylan Brooks and and Desmond Bain and everybody else was just on that type of time, it seemed to me. Like, oh, no, 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 no. I know you guys are making mistakes, but but we understand we're supposed to go home, so we're going to do that. Like, that's what I got. That's what it was given. So, you know, you got you to gotta remove Dylan Brooks and Desmond Bain from that once again. They were not playing like that. Their energy was, was up and active. Like I said, Steven Adams was going at it. He was doing some good things. But the rest of the team... They, like I've been saying about these teams and these playoffs, I have my issues with every last one of them for the same reason. They don't take the game on the road. Every last team that's still left in these playoffs has shown me something that makes me think they do not deserve to win the championship. And it's come from, it starts with their benches being anemic in other people's buildings. All of them have that issue. Every single one of these teams. And the Golden State Warriors... They took care of home court because the Memphis Grizzlies had that problem tonight. <laughs> as simple as that. They bench ain't show up. You look down there at their bench production outside of DeAnthony Melton. Um, you know, if my mind serves me correctly, I'm trying to skim down, figure out. You know, I look at Isaiah Williams. He did nothing tonight. No show. For his season. On the road. Nowhere to be found. What's up with these youngsters, man? Is this what it is? Y'all can't show up on the road? I don't know, man. I'm calling it out. On this channel, we will not we will not let that type of thing slide. Not at all. I'm from the old school. You got to bring your hard hat on the road. If you want to be a champion, you have got... And I, I don't have no, no excuse or respect for the mentality of these guys are the other guys so their game doesn't travel. No. These guys are the best basketball players in the entire world who happen to have lesser roles because guys that are even better than them happen to be on the teams that they're on. There should be no professional in that league that can't play 
both at home and on the road. Period. If your game don't travel, you are not good enough to be in this league. And I can't stress that enough. You need to sit next to me on a couch. And I felt that way my entire life, and I'm going to stand on that. I really believe that. This is the NBA. We are not talking about no college. We're not talking about none of that. The, the, the best players all over the world are trying to fight their way to this spot. It's only about 500 spots. There is no room for scrubs in 2022. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm the guy saying it. There's no room for lesser players in this league no more. It, there's too many basketball players that are fully well-rounded to be running scrubs out there. And, and, and I'm not saying anybody on these two teams are scrubs because, to be honest with you, I only see about one between the two of them. It's about one scrub. on Between the two of these two teams, they're very good teams. But that's not the point. It's about good players, great players, scrubs alike. Everybody in the league showing up for both the home games and the road games. Not being front runners. When the crowd behind you only know how to shoot a ball when the rhythm's going. Nah. A team that's going to bring that effort everywhere. That's what I respect. That's that's the type of team I would want to put a, put together. That's the type of team I would put my money on. And I don't see that team in this league uh, in terms of this, these playoffs. The rest of the teams left, ain't none of them. I put, nah. Ain't betting none of these squads. Nope. Mm-mm. This, this, this thing is a toss-up. Any of the teams left could win the championship. I promise you that. Ain't no leaders in the clubhouse today. So the Golden State Warriors, you know, they limp, they stumbled their way into these play these these Western Conference Finals. I could argue they do not deserve to be here based on the last couple games we've seen them play. I'm, I'm not going to play around about it. They barely won tonight. The way they was pedestrian with the basketball, coughing it up. The stuff I was telling you about with Steph Curry. And then big games when he'd be protect, pedestrian with the basketball, turning it over, unforced turnovers, throwing the ball way over people's heads. He did a lot of that tonight. He and Clay was having issues with that tonight. And it was Wiggins and Looney and 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 and, and those guys that was saving a backside. Draymond, even though he was turning the ball over quite a bit himself. They were the ones saving their backsides on the offensive side of the ball. So, you know, I'm even though they won, they were so bad tonight, I was not impressed by any stretch of the imagination. I, in fact, I think this game was just a carryover from the last one. To be honest so a lot of people are gonna give the, the golden state warriors credit i think there's a few players on that team that definitely deserved it starting with kavon looney and clay thompson those are, and, and andrew wiggins those are the names that come to mind first they was awesome but everybody else a little shaky clay thompson you know you got to give him the credit of course for just having that killer instinct tonight he was not playing with his team at all and even though he had his issues his struggles he's still trying to fight through you know, his newfound body, basically, uh, after these injuries. He's still a lethal, lethal killer. And you poke that bear, you got him over there with that sad face, and it ain't because he mad at himself. You should be concerned, because he's going to take it out on you. He's done it many, many years in the past. Got a lot of disrespect coming his way. He didn't make that top 75. Everybody saying he washed up. Everybody laughing at him because he's struggling. But I have seen him do the impossible. I know what he can do. Even if he's not healthy, even if his legs barely together, he's still one of the greatest shooters to ever play this game. And his teammate is the greatest shooter to ever play this game. So if you're going to, you know, say, hey, Grizz in seven, talking all that stuff. You know, I looked, I saw what Dylan Brooks did tonight. He was kind of disrespectful to, 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 to Steph Curry. All right. They struggling, they ain't look too good, even I'm bashing them. But at the end of the day, if you're going to talk crap about them, you had better be ready for what come with that. Eight threes in the closeout game. He dropped on y'all head, Memphis. Eight of them. I'm just saying, man. So, that is really all there is to say, man. Congratulations to Mike Brown and the, the Warriors. Uh, I, I Like I said, I bashed Mike Brown. I ain't taking about nothing I said. Not a single word. <laughs> Him starting Kevon Looney was a fantastic decision. Uh, but I think a lot of what went wrong over these last three games was uh, credited to the adjustments that he, he made. So uh, I would like to think that this time off, 
will allow Steve Kerr to get back on the court. Hopefully they can clear him very soon. And the Golden State Warriors can get back to business and play whoever it is they're going to see, Phoenix or Dallas. Game 7 is on Sunday. But um, as for this, uh, this is a wrap. Got to give credit to John Morant, most improved player of the year. He talked a lot of crap all year long, and while he was on the floor, it was a lot of crap being backed up. As soon as he got off, as soon as he got hurt, there was no more of that. There was no more of that. This team is a very good team without John Morant, but they are not a championship team without John Morant. So we can get that out your minds early. If people are going to try to say that because of the record during the regular season, I just encur I, I encourage you to look at what went wrong tonight. They relied on Tyus Jones because they needed somebody to facilitate for them, and he couldn't throw a rock in the damn ocean. They missed John Moran. So that's really what it is, man. I give credit to the Memphis Grizzlies. They had a fantastic season. I love what they did against the Memphis Grizzlies. I love what they did all year long. I think their future is super bright. They got a pick swap coming up sometime soon. If not this season, then next season probably from the Lakers via the, the Pelicans uh, or vice versa, however you say that. And their team is just going to continue to get better. You know, that's the bottom line. The Zaire Williams, the Baines, the Brooks, they're going to get better. Ja, those guys are all going to get better. And I expect them all to keep it together next year. They, I don't expect them to make no major moves with their roster. I don't even think they should really retool it all. Just bring back everybody and do this again. Coach everybody. There's nothing wrong with Memphis. They just got a little older. They learned some hard lessons. They got their heart broke tonight. And they got out of the season healthy. Everybody's healthy. Except for John Moran. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how his offseason goes. Hopefully there's no surgery, anything like that needed. Um, but, but as far as I can tell, the Memphis Grizzlies have a lot to be happy about. They ended their season having gotten all the way to the sixth game of the second round. So congratulations to them on a fantastic season. It didn't end the way that you would hope, but there's no reason to not see this as a success. Uh, not at all. And, of course, congratulations to the Warriors who um, – have have found their way back you know what i mean they, they've had some time off some tough years KD left all that but here they are back in the western conference finals with an opportunity to play to get back to the big dance and um you know judging by the way they played tonight uh they're gonna have to to continue to make put an emphasis on on you know the glass as they did this particular evening but also you know just just maintaining their health because that's the key thing for the Golden State Warriors. They rely a lot on Draymond Green, uh, you know, to, to, to kind of facilitate and to do things defensively for them. Uh, and obviously, you know, Jordan Poole is dealing with his elbow. Uh, Clay is still obviously dealing with whatever, you know, he's trying to work his way into his conditioning. You know, this Golden State Warrior team could use his time off. But one thing's for sure, uh, they are going to have to continue to play defense they're going to have to continue to take care of the basketball or begin to take care of the basketball. And whoever they see is going to give them a hell of a fight. If it's Dallas or if it's Phoenix, uh, this is not going to be a situation where Golden State can just, just dance their way into the situation like it's going to be cool. The Memphis Grizzlies were a young team, made a lot of mistakes. I don't know that the next team they're going to see is going to have that same problem. So uh, that is pretty much what I got to say, man. Congratulations to both teams. This series is a wrap. I thank you all for following me on this entire series. Of course, we're going to do the Western Conference Finals and Eastern Conference Finals as well. We're going to keep this thing going. And I thank you all for rocking with BDF 44.